I see you did not heed my warning. Or perhaps you think yourself strong enough to face me. I know I am. Imperius, stop this madness. Diablo is the enemy here, not the Nephilim. Tyrion, I will deal with you soon enough. I will... What is this? No! Diablo has reached the Arch! No. Diablo has begun extinguishing the Crystal Arch. That's why the angels have fallen. If its light should go out forever, we must defeat Diablo before that happens. It is left to us mortals, Tyrion. It is good you no longer have your wings. Diablo's vile corruption bars our path. Stand back. Eldruin's light shall clear the way. Hey guys and girls at Diablo Tree, this is Starwind here, and today you join me at the pinnacle of heaven in the Crystal Arch. Since Tyrell is now immortal and is unaffected by any damage to the arch, he was opened the way for us through so we could get in here. So, today's boss is Diablo, he's also known as the Prime Evil, and he is our final boss of Act 4 and of the game. Diablo was the youngest of the Prime Evils, and he is the most dangerous of the Prime Evils as well. Um, though he had easily possessed many humans, his essence was finally trapped in a soul stone and banished to the unfathomable abyss 20 years ago. So a bit of information. In Nightmare, he's a level 50 boss. He has hit points of 2,688,000 and you gain 3,400 experience points for the encounter. So he's got a lot of attacks, so let's go through to most of them. So he's got melee, when you're within range, uh, ring of fire, ground stomp, hell spikes, shadow vanish, grab, charge, shadow clones, lightning breath, and overdrive. So the battle against Diablo consists of three phases, the first phase of which is the prime phase. In melee range you'll be subject to a base melee attack which also puts a curse on you. This curse does damage over time and you need to keep your eye out for it um, as it is, it is damaging. If you have any sort of uh, passive abilities that stops uh, damage over time, it's worth putting them on. And most of Diablo's attacks are fire based, so when it gets to hell and inferno mode, it would be good to stack some fire resistance if you can. So let's we'll go over the first phase, the prime phase. So Diablo's ground stomp does fireball, once it's a once off damage, make sure you can avoid it if you can. And Diablo will summon a ring of fire, you have to stay out of this as it does periodic damage that can kill you. Um, when Diablo raises his hands above his head, watch for black circles on the ground as he's trying to trap you. Um, so you'll see him raise his hands and then these cages come up, these claw cages. He'll have trapped your follower um, in one down the way here. He'll, he'll raise five cages in the first phase, so once you avoid all of them you should be fine. Now he also raises them in the second phase and it's harder to see them because of the black ground. Um, if captured in it you take periodic damage until you're slammed into the ground which also does further damage. Um, there are two healing wells in, pr in the prime phase in the arch. It's important you stay at either, either one uh, during the battle. There's a 30 second cooldown so when we use one, move to the other one and then when you use it over on the other side, use it there. So it might take a bit of time dragging Diablo, Diablo over and back but it's worth doing. Um, Diablo can be controlled with slow, chill, stun and freeze but he's immune to all other forms of CC. Once you have him at 50% he'll pull you into the second phase which you can see right here. Um, in the second phase, so phase 2 is called the terror phase. Um, in phase 2, Diablo has all the same attacks as he has in phase 1, but he's the added extra of being able to summon shadow clones. And shadow clones are easily defeated, so make sure you take them down. And also, there's no health wells here, so you're actually going to use the shadow clones' um, health globes to help you. They're far less um, health than you do, and you can take them down pretty easily. Uh, they're not the same gear or anything, or even the same hit points. It's just a, a clone of the same gender and class. And they'll use some abilities that they have, not even your own abilities, so... It's just it's just a, a clone, a very light clone we'll call it. Um, so he's gonna he's gonna raise them every third of his health. So every time you take him down a third of his health, he'll raise them shadow clones. I keep getting trapped in them bloody trap things, but 
better than me than the other person because I'm heavily overgeared again for this boss. So I've done a lot of farming, just checking all different farming spots as well. So I'll bring them in other videos today as well. Uh, don't turn your back on the hooded nightmares or you'll get a, a curse called Curse of Rust which makes the, sh the Shadow Diablo's damage do a hell of a lot more damage to you over time. Um, it's worth making sure that you skip them. Um, so you'll enter then back into the third phase which you see here called Ultimate Phase. Um, Diablo has only half his life for the third phase, a third and final phase of the battle, but he has two new devastating attacks at his disposal. For starters, he will approach, he, he now operates on overdrive and casts a whole lot faster than he did before this. And he has his deadliest attack, which is called Lightning Breath. And if you see him lean back, he's going to start casting the Lightning Breath. You need to be very careful for this, as it can kill you in one shot. Um, You'll need to keep on the move. If you can jump to his back or, or use something like that heroic leap to his back, make sure you do it because here it comes. That's it. I actually just stood there because my, I'm so overgeared for this, I didn't really do much damage to me. But, and I just used heroic leap as well, so my armor was 400% extra. But if you if you are doing this, you need to avoid that attack. It will kill you in one shot if you're geared normally for it. Um, he can turn it at 180 degrees as well while he's doing that attack. So while he's doing that, uh, li that lightning breath, he can actually turn in an arc very slow slowly and he should be able to avoid it. Um, so continue to use the health wells and focus on attacking between the lightning breaths and health spikes. And keep up the pressure to bring him to his knees. Once he's on his knees, you're going to deliver the final death strike to him. So um, you're just going to keep hitting him until he finishes off. And that'll be the end of him. Um, I hope you enjoyed this series on the nightmare bosses. And um, we've gone through pretty much, I think actually no, we've done every single boss that matters in the game anyway. Um, I'm not going to do them on the rest. What I'm going to do is in hell I'm going to give you each boss to the end of each act. Just so you can see how difficult they are but not actually go over how to do them. The tactics for Inferno and Hell will be the exact same as these. They'll just have more hit points and more uh, damage output. So it's the exact same tactics. And um, What I'm going to do is go over all the elites. How to take down all the elites. All the separate types of things like vampire and um, extra health, and just what all the different aspects of the elites are, and how to how to work against their um, abilities, or how to work yeah against their abilities so you can save yourself. So that's the aim of the next series of videos, and uh, I'm also gonna we're well, gonna do an Inferno um, let's play series. So you'll get to see Inferno. There's only 1.9% of people get into Inferno, so I've got to. I'm gonna go through it, which is just so you can see it. See how Inferno plays and just how difficult it actually is when you're in there playing. So, till next time, guys, hope you enjoyed and adios.